Welcome to the DCT User Guide Safety Attribute video on Procedures. This video will show you how procedures worked in early aviation and how they apply today to both small and large certificate holders. Procedures outline the steps to complete a process in enough detail so trained employees can accomplish their work. Procedures may be written or unwritten depending on regulatory requirements and the complexity of the certificate holder. There's a difference, too, between policy and procedures. And during our surveillance, we may find more policy than procedures. Procedures tell you how something is accomplished, while policy is what the certificate holder expects, the desired result. It's easy to confuse the two. For example, regulations are often stated as policy. The regulations don't tell you how the certificate holder should complete a task or process, and there's often more than one way to meet the intent of a rule. Let's look at our definition. Methods or practices that are written or unwritten, regulatory or non-regulatory, designed into a process that a certificate holder or applicant uses to accomplish a desired result. Unwritten methods refer to certificate holders or applicants that are not required by regulation to have documented procedures. Procedures and manuals have been around since early aviation, just like our other safety attributes. For example, the first female flight attendants took to the air in 1930 for Boeing Air Transport, later becoming United Airlines. Ellen Church was the first female flight attendant, better known back then as stewardesses. Ellen helped write the very first flight attendant manual for eight stewardesses. That manual was 13 pages long. Here are a few procedures from that manual. Keep in mind, this was the first manual, so you may find more policy than procedures. Captains and cockpit crew will be treated with strict formality while in uniform. A rigid military salute will be rendered to the captain and co-pilot as they go aboard. Use a small broom on the floor prior to every flight. Keep an eye on passengers when they go to the lavatory to be sure they don't mistakenly go out of the emergency exit. Check the floor bolts on wicker seats to ensure they are securely fastened down. SWAT flies in the cabin after takeoff. Warn passengers against throwing lighted smoking butts or other objects out of the windows, especially over populated areas. Well, things have changed a little since then. No doubt Ellen made a few revisions to that manual based on flying experiences. Today's flight attendant manuals, on average, are over 400 pages long. We've gone from hard copy manuals to electronic manuals and both approved and accepted programs. Let's look at an example of the difference between a written and unwritten procedure and how we conduct surveillance on an unwritten procedure. During the initial certification process, applicants are required to develop a compliance statement which documents how they intend to comply with each applicable regulation. Some certificate holders are required to have manuals, such as 121 operations, and others are not, like a single pilot 135 operation. However, they are both required to follow regulatory requirements and to operate safely. Before they are given a certificate, the applicant must prove to the FAA they meet regulatory requirements and can operate safely. For a certificate holder who is not required to have manuals, design assessments can be used with the compliance statement to evaluate their unwritten methods or practices for initial certification. Once they have a certificate, ongoing surveillance is accomplished using performance assessments. For example, both large 121 air carriers and small 135 single pilot operators are required to maintain pilot record-keeping procedures or processes. 
Regardless of their size, they both have regulatory requirements. In a small 135 single pilot operation, the inspector will request to see their pilot records, which is a requirement of 14 CFR 135.63. Did the records meet the requirements of the rule? If so, then their methods must have worked. However, if the finding is unfavorable, then the certificate holder needs to develop methods that meet the requirements. Same thing for a 121 operator whose requirement comes under 121.683. A 121 air carrier must have written procedures contained in a manual according to 14 CFR 121.683. Both the 135 single pilot and the 121 air carrier must meet regulatory requirements, whether they have manuals or not. You can apply this principle to almost every process and any certificate holder. Another example can be found in the requirements for an aircraft logbook. Is it in order? And if not, why? Although we're looking to see if they have a method or procedure, written or unwritten, it's important to look at the other safety attributes, especially if you find a problem. Perhaps they have no procedures to keep processes on track and prevent a misstep. They may be missing process measurements to double check or audit the logbook to ensure their methods are working. Remember, all safety attributes apply to all certificate holders big or small. One of the issues we often find with written manuals is there's more policy than procedures. There is a distinct difference, as discussed, the CFR state policy, since we, the regulator, don't tell the certificate holder how to comply, but only that they must comply. Advisory circulars and other FAA guidance provide information on best practices for regulatory compliance. Procedures outline the steps to complete a process, which includes step-by-step -step instructions for their employees. Here's an example of a carry-on baggage policy and procedure. The policy is, all carry-on baggage must be properly stowed prior to closure of the aircraft door. This is based on 14 CFR 121.589 requirements and is what the certificate holder must do. However, this doesn't tell the employees how to accomplish the requirement. So here's the procedures or how to complete the task. Once all passengers have boarded, the L2 flight attendant will walk through the cabin to check and ensure carry-on baggage is properly stowed and overhead bins closed. The L2 flight attendant will inform the lead flight attendant when the cabin is secure. The lead flight attendant will inform the captain, cabin ready, and ask permission to close the boarding door. The lead flight attendant will advise the agent and close the boarding door. As you can see, there's a distinct difference between a policy and a procedure. Every DCT question is based on one of the seven safety attributes. Procedures questions focus on the technical process and are based on FAA regulatory requirements and or guidance. The System Subsystem Performance DCT Procedure question asks, did the certificate holder meet its regulatory and guidance requirements for element name? This high-level SPDCT question includes every regulatory and guidance reference in the associated EPDCT. For example, Let's look at a procedures question in SPDCT 2.1, Training and Qualification. This particular question is based on element 2.1.1, Training of Flight Crew Members, which is one of the derivative elements of subsystem 2.1. All the references you see listed in the far right column, and there are quite a few, come from the specific technical process question references in EP DCT 2.1.1. At the SP level, answering this question is essentially answering the questions to all of those references related to the technical process. 
To help you answer this question, it may be helpful to review the questions in EP DCT 2.1.1. You can also review the related element questions or add the EP DCT under the SAS Perform DCT tab. The ED and EP DCT procedures questions are very specific to the functioning of the technical process for that element, either through a regulatory or guidance requirement. The ED and EP DCT procedures questions mirror one another. For example, a procedures question in ED DCT 2.1.1 asks, do the procedures specify that all flight crew members complete approved initial crew resource management training? The procedures question in EP DCT 2.1.1 asks, verify flight crew members complete approved initial crew resource management training. Both questions reference specific regulations and guidance that addresses initial crew resource management training for flight crew members. Almost all the questions in an ED or EP DCT are procedural and are specifically written for multiple regulatory and guidance requirements for the element's technical process. It's important to remember, our system safety approach to oversight requires we look not only at the technical processes defined in the procedures questions, but also consider the managerial functions of the organization. When there is a procedural problem, we need to consider the other safety attributes when determining the root cause. We've come a long way since Ellen Church introduced the first flight attendant manual over 85 years ago. Procedures can be written or unwritten. Some certificate holders have manuals and some don't, but they all have a responsibility to develop methods or procedures to ensure regulatory requirements are met and that they operate safely.